Hey there everyone. Today we're going to be doing some torn paper landscapes. Um, hopefully you had a chance to look at uh, Ted Harrison's, uh, the artist, the Canadian artist Ted Harrison, his landscapes on the Jamboard. Um, he uses bright, brilliant colors as you can see. Um, not necessarily realistic colors for a landscape, so we're going to play with some colors today. Um, for this you're going to need um, some of your construction paper and scraps if you have them too, that, that will be fine. And I chose to, um, in, in Ted Harrison's work, a lot of times he'll have these uh, defining lines. So I did choose to use a little bit of oil pastel, if you can see, um, to outline some of my torn paper areas. Um, you don't, you don't, definitely don't need to do that, but if you have those or if you have markers, um, you can use markers as well. Um, so we're gonna start by um, tearing our paper. And there's a little trick that I just learned that I never knew before. But if you have um, if you have trouble tearing exactly where you want to tear, you can take a little bit of water, a paintbrush, and draw your lines and saturate your paper with a lot of water that way. And what the water does is it just kind of weakens the paper along that line. So if you want to get really precise, if you don't mind, you know, just sort of tearing paper and having unexpected things happen, you can do that too. So there's my and it's seeping through pretty well. So I should be able to pretty easily tear along this wet bit line. Working more or less. You can, of course, you could use scissors for this project too if you really wanted to get precise. I kind of like tearing because you don't really always get what you expected. Sometimes you have some happy mistakes there. So I'm going to um, I'm going to cut this down because I actually want this pink to be my background piece of paper because for this next for this landscape that I'm going to do now. Um, I'm actually going to be taking um, graduating colors of paper. So from, we're going to go from orange, is our lightest. We've got this slightly off red. And we've got a really dark red. And then we have a purple. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because when you look out over, like, especially like a mountainscape, um, Oftentimes, what you see, if you're seeing rolling hills, the hill that's closest to you, or the mountain that's closest to you, is often appears to be darker. And then, as you go further and further and further away from your vantage point, those mountains almost look like they're fading away. So they get a little bit lighter and lighter the further away they are. So I'm going to try and kind of do something like that with my pages. So what you want to do is you have your background page here. The color that you want to have furthest away from you is the one you should start with. So I want my orange, because I'm going from darkest to lightest, I want my orange to be the next color. So I happen to have a big orange piece. I'm going to cut that down because I don't need all of it. This is a good way to use scraps too. You don't need to have like a perfect piece of paper. If you have some of your own, papers that you've made, like with marker, they put markers on them or put watercolor paint on them. You could certainly use those in this too to get a little bit more interesting texture and stuff. So I'm just tearing my first set of mountains. So this is going to be the one that goes up at the top of my page. So I'm going to glue that down. Oh, I forgot to mention, yes, that for this project you also need glues, but you should have glue, glue sticks and or glue included in your materials kit. And like I said, if you wanted to use scissors, you can do that too. I just think tearing is kind of interesting. So this goes up at the top of my page. So that's my farthest away set of mountains. And if you are using, I'm using this smaller piece of paper because that's just what I have, but if you're using a bigger piece of paper, you could save room for, you know, a sun or moon in the sky if I wanted to. So my next color down would be this color. So I'm going to go ahead and tear this of that. 
and we're going to overlap them on the page. And then Ted Harrison's landscape, um, he almost always puts some sort of a human element in it, um, like a little cabin down at the bottom or some people walking through the landscape or even um, rock sculptures that are called Inukshuks, which you'll be learning about in the next video. And next color, they have this sort of texture, this um, swirly colored red page. I'll go ahead and put some of that in there. Ted Harrison was a Canadian painter and printer um, who lived up in the very far north. And since that up north is sort of the theme of our first set of classes, I thought it would be fun to explore his work a little bit and his really playful, fun use of color is always good too. And the final, it's purple. And I already sort of have this purple torn here, so I, I guess I'll just use it the right, exactly the way that it is. And I'll just cut it down and line it up with the bottom of my page. Like so. And now, like I said, you could go ahead and go back into your picture using markers or oil pastels or whatever you have around, pencils and draw a little village down at the bottom or put some people or some I, like trees. I did put some trees in here, but I think I might go back and put a little village and um, a lot of Ted Harrison's paintings also have little people walking their dogs. So you could draw in anything you wanted in the foreground of your painting. So that's some torn paper landscapes um, inspired by Ted Harrison. I hope you guys have fun. Bye-bye.